From Relay FM, this is Upgrade, episode 515, the WWDC draft for 2024. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Tailscale, and Express VPN. It is June 3rd, 2024. My name is Mike Hurley, and I am joined by my collaborator and competitor, Jason Snell. 515, baby! Woo! Good to be here any, for drafting. Any 515 facts for us? I, it's a sequel error, I think. I don't know. It sounds like it would be a, an interstate. Well, 501, fun, 5 area code is just Iowa. That's boring. Sorry, Iowa. Uh, mm-hmm. Interstate 515 is like a spur in Nevada. No, I don't. I, it, it feels really resonant, but it's not. 515. Just It means, you know what the most important thing about 515 is? Tell me. It's the WWDC 2024 draft. I have a snow talk question for you, and it comes from me to you, Jason. Okay. Uh, what are your current excitement levels for WWDC this year? Uh, low. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Why? Um, no, no, but no, that. But you know what, though, I figured it was either going to be low or high, and that was uh, what I wanted to ask you. Like okay. I wanted to kind of vibe check you. Yeah. Right now. Low, mostly because like there's not going to be any hardware. Last year they launched a whole new platform and introduced a whole new piece of hardware. Um. This year, it feels like they've been given the directive to integrate the AI stuff everywhere, and that's interesting, but it also means that my expectations for everything else are pretty low. It feels like, you know, and maybe maybe we'll be surprised. I hope we're surprised, because I'm feeling like they're going to be very minimal additions to everything. Yes. Especially if you're not the iPhone. And... Except, except in the realm of AI, right, and, and AI features, and those, those probably be nice to have. Although I'm on the record saying people will probably be disappointed because they're probably going to compact a whole bunch of wishes into this dream of Apple's big AI reveal, and it's going to be much more pragmatic and and not as uh, exciting as all that. And so, like some of the stuff that I really love is like interesting new Mac features, and maybe there's a couple new pieces of hardware, and I. It, it sounds to me like it's going to be much more straightforward than that. And the AI stuff is stuff they want to do. But it's almost like they're they're um, telling us to eat our vegetables a little bit. Where it's like, okay, we got to do this AI stuff, everybody. Ready? Ready? And they do. It's not like they don't have to. All right, let's do it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm thinking the fiber content of this year's WWDC may be higher than usual. And that's, it's, you know, necessary roughage. It's fine. But it's not the most exciting to me. So uh, where I am with this right now, like I have been on a little bit of a journey where at first I didn't think Apple would have much to show. Then I thought they would have much to show. And now I think maybe they they won't again, or at least the the state of AI has moved so fast in the last even six weeks that I feel like even with all the stuff they're going to show, it might feel a little bit underwhelming. Like the amount of time that they're going to spend on the features and that these features won't they will pale in comparison to microsoft for example that's that's kind of the fear that that i have right now that like it's not it's not going to be that like they're going to spend all this time talking about all this incredible new stuff but it might not actually feel that incredible right however i'm kind of also at the same time like where i am today i'm uh, i'm allowing for myself to remain hopeful that they're going to have some stuff that is cool well, this is um, yeah. Oh, and there, I hope there. I hope there is. But also, when I ha- get that eat your vegetables feeling, part of it is that Apple does need to do table stakes, does need to catch up in a bunch of areas, right? And that's less exciting, but it's necessary. Mm. Like I was listening to to ATP over the weekend, and one of the things Marco said struck me, which is he was like, "I hope that they do things to excite us and show that Apple is pushing things forward and not yep. just playing catch up." And then John said something like. But those are table stakes. They have to do it. And that was my thought, which is, on one level, I understand not being excited by Apple doing the stuff that's already been announced by other other players, Microsoft and Google in particular. On the other hand, they got to do it, right? Like, if they don't no, do it, it's a disaster. But I feel like they have to disaster. do both. But they, like, they have ideally, to show yeah. the table stakes, and then how are they pushing the where's, state of the art? Where's a little Apple, magic, a little yeah. Apple magic here and there where they're like, aha, yeah. everybody else does it like this, but we decided to do it like this. Which, when that is done right, everybody else goes, oh, yeah, we should do it like that too, right? That's the kind of Apple yep. magic stuff. So I hope, I hope we see some of that. 
and I and I I do remain hopeful that they will be able to do both of these things. Like that, that they will be able to uh, show off the basics and also yeah. show me some stuff that's going to get me excited. And if Siri that's, transforms that's finally from mm-hmm. being something that's just really not very good to something that's a lot better, uh, or at least has the potential to be a lot better if we trust them and believe that it will be whenever it ships, you know, yeah, um, that that would be a big step right there because that's a thing we've been wanting for a long time. Yep, most definitely, most definitely. Um, there's also kind of like where I am right now is not too dissimilar to kind of how I was feeling Port the Vision Pro shipped, which is no matter what the feeling is, no matter what the features are, it's going to be really interesting to talk about. That's kind of where 100%, I am with 100%. WWDC, AI, yeah. or whatever they announce at WWDC. There will be a lot for us to pick apart whether it's good, bad, or whether we like it or not. That's kind of where I'm feeling with yeah. it. So that, that excites me always anyway. So, And argue about, right? Like, I mean, arguing about it, because um, I do think that there are a lot of people who feel like a lot of the AI stuff is hype, and a lot of it is, but what percentage is hype? And so there mm-hmm. are going to be people who might say, oh, Apple didn't do this thing, and the counter is going to be, yeah, but that thing is bad, actually, <laughs> right? And yeah. and that's going to be a, a real push and pull, too. It's, it's a little bit of a, a Rorschach test about... Um, how you feel about AI. And, you know, I, I've said it before. I think AI has, the, has enormous potential and also is overhyped. I think both of those things are true. Um, yes. So where Apple comes down will be interesting. Yep, most definitely. Uh, if you would like to send in a snow talk for a future episode, you can always go to upgradefeedback.com. Thanks me for sending that yeah, one thanks, Mike. via our document. Which mm-hmm. uh, it, Also, if you have access to our document, you can just put one in there. But that, that group is very small. Wow, that's real dangerous. <laughs> You just said that. You know, I, I can always delete now. them, Jason. You know, I can always delete them. Yeah, but true. But who has access to our document? Uh, the, uh, this new document, not many people, okay. actually. I think Federico, you, and Zach, who uh, produces the interactive scorecards, which you can, you can always get over at upgrade.cards. Thank you, Zach, for producing those for us. And that leads me so beautifully into the rules for the draft. They're slightly different this time, so that we're going to talk about it. I'm going to go through them. They may need a bit more uh, uh, explanation as we go through it, but these are the rules for the WWC draft this year. There will be 12 rounds, 24 overall picks as we pick each. We each get a pick by round. The picks this time are chosen from a predetermined list of choices, as they always are, which we have agreed could be verifiable on screen and not ridiculously obvious. Yes. However, here is the change. Each host, just the two of us... M- must draft at least one pick from each of the following five categories. iOS, iPadOS, macOS, VisionOS, and AI. Each host must call out the mandatory picks specifically when they are made, right? So if we're saying, oh, this is going to be my iOS pick, or this is going to be my iPadOS pick. So we have those five categories. We each have to make one pick in each of these categories. Every other pick for the 12 rounds can be from anything. Yeah. It could be, we could pick more iOS stuff, more AI stuff, but we have to make at least one pick in each of the specific categories that I mentioned. Right. Is that explained? Yeah. The goal here is to spread the picks around at least a little bit. So they're not, for example, all AI picks. And Mm -hmm. uh, it provides a little bit of a challenge and there's a little bit of game going on there. There's a new Um, game. I explained to Mike that it's a little like fantasy sports where you've got a roster and you've got particular slots that you have to fill. And the example I gave is that, you know, you, you, it's the last round and then you pick a kicker. It's that kind of thing where uh, there's just, we're not trying to complexify this. We're actually trying to do this so that the podcast is better. And we talk about each of these five subjects at some point rather than piling on one category. Mm-hmm. The winner of the previous draft gets to pick first, which is me. Yes, on and a streak. as always, for an item to count in scoring, it must either be clearly announced on stage or on a slide during the presentation. Stephen Hackett will adjudicate in the case that we need it, but we will always try to work it out ourselves. No partial points are awarded, and the points awarded on the episode are final and finalized during the scoring segment, lest we remember WWDC yeah. 2022. Sorry about that. In the case of a tie, there is a tiebreaker question. The loser gets the pick of the tiebreaker question, and then the pre- the draft winner gets the over-under on that. The winner becomes draft champion and displays the champion pennant. The loser becomes draft challenger and displays the challenger pennant. Yeah. 
You can always buy your own draft tea over at UpgradeYourWardrobe.com so you can be ready for all drafts like I am today. I'm wearing my draft t-shirt today. These are my favorite things. Now we've been doing this for so long, we have a lot of statistics. There have been eight WWDC drafts in Upgrade history. Jason has won three WWDC drafts. Mike has won five mm. WWDC drafts. Wait, you mean Snell uh, Talk S- listener Mike? <laughs> wow. Snell Talk listener Mike. He's really good, actually. I, you should have him sign something. Why not? So far this year, there has been one draft, the iPad draft, which I won. Uh, yeah. I, as Jason mentioned a moment ago, I am on quite a streak. Quite I don't streak. think this is the longest streak ever. You hold that. Um, but I'm I'm going for it. Yeah, good for you. Would you like to pick the tiebreaker question? All right. The tiebreaker is event runtime, and I'm going to set the over-under at one hour and 50 minutes. Okay. Now you, I saw in our in our picks document, I think. Yes. Um, you we have the run the times. Previous run times. of the last three WWDCs. They were one forty six in twenty twenty one, one forty eight in twenty twenty two, and two oh six in twenty twenty three. You picked one hour fifty really well, and I think for my same thinking, which is, I mean, it's unlikely that they would match last year, right? They introduced an entire platform and hardware. So two, over two hours, you figure it's got to be less than that. And if previous years have always got to the high 145 to 150 mark, oh boy. Yep. I'm going to say under an hour and 50. Okay. I'm going to say under. And I, I feel like the the AI stuff as we said earlier is most likely to just be replacing most of what they would yep. normally do rather than being additive to the typical OS improvements. So I was surprised because it looks like generally they they shoot for 145, but I think generally what they're really shooting for is two, and not 145. But they're happy to yep. come under 206 in 2023. Remember the whole Vision Pro there, and yet it mm-hmm. was really only 15 minutes, 20 minutes longer. Than the mm-hmm. previous one, so clearly they're shooting for something between 145 and two. I didn't feel comfortable choosing two as the over under because I think Vision Pro really pushed that thing along. I wasn't comfortable pitch, uh, choosing 145 because I think that would have made it a lot easier to choose the over. So, this was your question: Is is it going to be a little longer than normal because of AI, or is it going to kind of be in the ballpark? So, I think that's a good pick by you. I was kind of hoping to tempt you to the over because I also think it's probably going to be about 145, 148, but um, we'll see. We sure will. All right, so I think that that will bring us to the first rounds of the draft for this year. So I will be going first, and I will immediately be picking my AI mandatory pick. Oh, okay. All right. This is the this is the gamesmanship, right? Like I've been thinking a lot about yep, this. Yep, like yep, yep. I've been pretty pretty stressed out about how to call these picks, right? So I'm That's going first. AI pick mandatory. And my number one pick is Siri becomes more conversational. Okay. What do we mean by that? I, I mean, I had it high on my list too, so it's a good pick. But what what do we mean by that? You know, I, I do actually think they will call it this specifically. Mm. Like, I, I think conversational. But I think what we're going to see is Apple demonstrating that Siri, like the personality is different. It's changed. Like that it responds more. It asks you more questions. Like there's going to be something here about like, this might be a bit of a know it when we see it kind of, kind of thing. But I think it will become quite clear that the Siri in iOS 18 will be more advanced than the Siri in right. iOS 17. So um, that in, wh- in the conversations you have with it, it will be different. I have roofers on my roof today, Mike, so there may be occasional noises. I apologize. Bad timing. Sorry, everybody. But here here is where it is. Um, I think we mean conversational. We'll know it when we see it. It's like having a conversation with Siri. And if if it's still like feeding it commands in a command line, you don't get the pick. And if it's more like, hey, Mike, yeah, I can help you with that. What do you want to know? Like, you'd be like, okay, it's conversational now. Uh, We're gentle. This is a gentleman's agreement kind of thing. And Stephen's there if we disagree. Yeah, I, I do feel like this is this is one that feels pretty locked to me. Like Siri, no matter no matter what happens, Siri is the interface, right? Like yeah. that, that's kind of how I feel. And Yeah, if they rename it or something too. We we know what this means. We we get yeah. it what this means. 
But I just feel like for, if they were going to do anything and not have some kind of enhancements to it, that that is going to be one of these things that they're going to they're going to seem behind if they're not making some kind of uh uh yeah personality, personality that seems chatty yeah. yeah yeah for sure all right you're up all right well um this is funny because i'm also going to do some gamesmanship here and so b- for that reason and that reason only i'm choosing a mac pick this is my mac oh, pick darn it. Oh, and no. its system settings is redesigned in mac os uh what do i mean oh, by this um uh <laughs> as mark Gurman has reported that the idea that they're going to make some changes in system settings uh whether it's reorganization or favorites or other things the organization i'm not saying it's necessarily going to look dramatically different but that they're going to make some organizational changes in mac os settings so that it's better now this may also be an ios and ipad os but i'm specifically saying you know in mac os they're going to do some something to write the disaster i'm not using that word lightly that is the organization and structure and function of system settings and it's my mac pick so the uh the gamesmanship here is that of all of the categories that we have predetermined we have the fewest mac os picks yeah and i don't like any of them (laughs) no they're all bad uh but this one was the one that i had labeled i wasn't going to pick it for any time soon but uh, this one seemed like maybe of all of the things we have, the thing that is the yeah. most likely well, to occur, if see, anything. See, the beauty of it is once the good quarterbacks are taken, you're left with the bad quarterbacks. You just leave it till the end. So you could just make your last pick the Mac pick if you want to now. Uh, currently, That's in my, I have a beauty. I have a short list of picks here, which is 25 picks long. It is my final pick. Yeah. So Makes we'll sense. get to that Makes later sense. on. Makes sense. But anyway, I, I, I went on a little rant on this on Six Colors podcast last week because I, I just was thinking about the system settings again. Don't make me think about them and like how, how frustrating frustrating it is that they have no they're organized except there is no order um, and things are in various weird places and you can't find anything so all you can really do is search and how it could be so much better either better ordered or if you're going to admit that there is no order show recent make be, be able to pin favorites just anything would be better than what's currently there so i hope it happens all right my next pick i'm actually going to make another ai pick Okay. Uh, AI summaries of notifications and content. Because Great pick. in iOS is, is where this is, but I don't think that makes a difference for... Anyway, this is what I'm saying. It's I, in, the, I think it's in that, our AI category, so this is just a, a freebie yeah. for you. For, uh, uh, yes, other, of course. Yeah. Yep. So if I'm thinking about what are the things that Apple's local models can do, this seems like the easiest that you would be able to either visually or audibly, I actually think they will do both, get summaries of all the notifications that you have. Um, or, you know, you're reading it, you've got an email on your screen and you could ask the assistant, what is this about? With these kinds of things, which I think could be really helpful, right? Like you're in a group chat that is super uh, noisy. Be like, what's the group chat talking about today? You know, and and that you could it could read stuff on screen. That would be my real hope is that it's actually going to read stuff on screen, so it wouldn't even necessarily need developer buy-in, right? Like, so you could go to a Discord channel and be like, "What's what's happening here?" And and I hope that Apple would be able to do that. Right? I feel like they could do that, and and I would like it if they would. But I think the the iOS, uh, sorry, the AI kind of summaries of things could be could be really nice, and I think this could be something that Apple could implement in a way that. And and I think a lot of these features is going to be important that they have stuff that they can do without there being a need for developers to have to opt in because I think that sometimes can can halt them a little bit. All right, Mike. The uh, the gamesmanship continues with my next pick. Mm-hmm. I choose an iPad pick uh, because <laughs> he's done me again. Because okay. again, I don't think there are very many iPad things to pick. So I'm going to pick. Yeah, it's a second round pick. People, the calculator app is coming to iPad OS. That's my pick. I came to win, Mike. I came to play hard and you try did. to win one finally. Calculator app on iPad OS. Apologies to friend of the show, James Thompson. He'll be fine. There's been a calculator app on the iPhone for a long time, and he still sells his calculator on. It's fine. It's fine. This is interesting. I'm, I'm, in, I'm finding this interesting the way that you're, you're doing this, because I had some of these picks and I was wondering, like, what is best? Is it best to claim the categories, or is it best to claim the things that are most likely to happen, that mm-hmm. we believe might be most likely to happen anyway? So I guess we'll find my, out. My right? feeling was, 
that there were some categories so limited that I was unhappy with any of my choices. And then there were categories where there was lots of stuff to pick from that I feel, mm. felt okay about. And mm -hmm. I felt like if there was literally only one Mac item, and for me it was actually only two iPad items, I yep. would just try to grab them up front because I felt like yep. it's the it's again it's that if there are only three good quarterbacks, you want to grab them, and if they're gone, then it doesn't matter. You can just let them go. So apologies to people who don't play fantasy American football, which I did for many years. I got uh, better, really? and I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I draft Apple things now instead. <laughs> One of us wrong with me. Oh. I guess the interesting thing now is if you think there's only two iPad OS picks, like do you just make the next one? You know, like in the next round. Oh, just is that to, how you play just me? to block you. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting idea. Probably not, but I mean, you have to weigh that. I mean, with, I can't trust you, can I? You can't, I can't trust, trust me. You. you can't trust me. Well, no, that, that's you. the thing. Yeah, if you, if there's only one up there, you could view it as, well, Jason's got his iPad pick. He doesn't need to pick the other one. Or, yeah, right, I could pick it and leave you with the dregs. Um, mm -hmm. You don't know how I feel about the pr probability of those items, right? If, they, if I felt there were two high probability items about the iPad, mm -hmm. I could go with them early or not. Uh, but you don't know whether I feel that way or not. So that's the strategy yeah. here. A little, little extra. Without strategy. adding a lot of complication, spice. there's a little extra strategy. A little spice. Yeah. Spice. It's true. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, Mike. This is our it's ninth. Ninth? You got a WWDC draft? I mean, whew. You got a, you know, a relationship that long. You, you got to keep, keep it, it keep it spicy, yeah. You got to keep some spice. Amen. So sometimes it means more rules, apparently. Is the that's, spice. that's what does it. Uh-huh. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, you can stand out from the crowd of a beautiful website, engage directly with your audience, and sell anything. Your products, services, even the content that you create, Squarespace has everything you need all in, your, all in one place and all on your terms. Their blueprint AI and SEO tools make it incredibly easy to get started. You start out with a completely personalized website with their new guided design system Squarespace Blueprint. You choose from professionally curated layouts and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to suit your brand or business and optimized for every device. Then you can easily launch your website to the world and get discovered fast with their integrated, optimized SEO tools so you can show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. It's tools like these SEO tools is why I love Squarespace. Like if when I'm building a website, this is not really something that I want to have to do much work in thinking about. I want a tool that's going to work for me out of the box. And with Squarespace, it's all built in. It's incredibly easy to put these things on your website and to be able to customize them the way that you want to suit you. And you don't have to think about all of the nuts and bolts. They take care of the hard stuff. So you can go out and put your site on to the world. You can show off your art. You can create your business, whatever it's going to be. You can also integrate flexible payments to Squarespace to make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. You can accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and ClearPay. Because selling your content is super simple with Squarespace. They have all of the tools that you need to sell exclusive content or products or services on your site. You can add paywalls to sell content or courses. You can even sell files that your customers can download like PDFs, music, or eBooks. Go to squarespace.com right now and sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash upgrade. You'll save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash upgrade. And when you decide to sign up, you'll get 10% off your first purchase and show your support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for the continued support of this show and all of Relay FM. Okay, draft round three. I'm going to pick my iOS pick. Oh, now. okay which is free placement of apps and widgets in iOS. Good pick, good pick. Because, oh boy, is it time to allow me to put apps wherever I want on my home screen. I heard somebody say this on a show recently. I think it may have been John Voorhees on App Stories. And he was like, do you think they'll get rid of jiggle mode? And that was an interesting thought to me. Ooh. I don't know if they would get rid of the jiggling. I do feel like I don't need that anymore. 
Um, but I don't know if maybe all customers do. You know what I mean? Like on my Mac, for example, every time I drag a file, they don't all start dancing. You know, <laughs> like I can just, yeah. I can handle it. I can move stuff around. It's fine. Um, we'll see. I, I think they won't get rid of that, but it would be interesting to see what they do. Uh, I'm just, I'm really keen about this, um, the, what what this system's going to look like. And I'm also intrigued to, to know if I'm going to use it. Like, Am I not my my home screens are all full? Am I going to have non full home screens? I don't know about that, but I do like the idea of of a bit more freedom. I, I've been struck by, especially on the iPad, Jason, of like how much space there is between the icons. Still, yeah, it's like, ridi- now I'm it's using a bigger ridiculous. iPad. It's like, yeah, it's what ridiculous. is going on over it's there? Ridiculous. I could put I have like a row of four app icons and a bunch of widgets on my iPad home screen. I could put eight app icons there and it'd be fine. I know. Like, I, I can. I don't if you look at the dock, I have so many in the dock in that same amount of space. I know. It's uh, ridiculous. And, and I, I, I'm assuming we're not going to get any changes to the iPad home screen because they'll oh, do one man. of those things where they put that it on the iPhone good. and then they would make iPad users wait a year for it. That will be sad. That would mm-hmm. oh, be real sad. But mm-hmm. you're probably right. You're yep. probably right. Yep. Yep. What is your third round pick? Uh, my third pick is new environments in Vision OS. <laughs> Okay. Going with a Vision OS pick. Uh, coming, you know those coming soon environments, they don't count. So I, adding some at least um, and mentioning that they're adding more environments to Vision OS as part of the Vision OS 2 update. So you're saying, because I it had in this pick that it would include the coming soon options. You're going to exclude the coming soon options? No, I'm saying that those should... count. If they update the coming ah, soons ah, to sorry, be there, yes. that still counts. To be they're, actually, they're new. Th- the soon has come? <laughs> yeah, the, they're, they're new too. If you can't use them now and you can use them... Uh, in this announcement, yes, that's, I just wanted to check because yeah. I would say that you know that, that they don't yes. exist, right? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's time. Well, next day it's time. I think this is something they should Past be time. doing. Yes. Uh, this is this is like um, watches, right? Like the the watch faces. This is like a thing. Apple should be adding these at least once a year. New environments. Why not? Absolutely. And apparently, they've got two that are coming soon. So coming soon. Maybe now is soon. Uh, my fourth round pick. Hmm. Ding. I'm going back to AI again. All right. Uh, Siri can perform more actions inside of apps. These are essentially shortcut actions is the way we'll think about them. But that you'll be in an app and you'll be able to say, you'll be able to ask your assistant to do something for you inside of that application and that it will just go ahead and perform it. Um, for the for the nerds among us, I guess this will just be built on the same technology that uh, shortcuts actions are built on, like app intents and that kind of stuff, to be able to to surface things. So, like for let's think of an example here that you could be what app what app would have as good action? Oh, you could be in Timery, say, and you could just you could just press the little button on the side of your phone and just say start my upgrade timer, and it would just go ahead and do that because. Siri should be able to understand what the app is able to perform. The app has been able to tell the system these are the things you can have and just have the assistant do this kind of stuff. This, to me, feels like, I think, would would be especially nice on the Mac, I think, is where I could imagine myself using it a lot more. But the idea of being able to talk to the computer and have the computer do things, it goes back to the, um, what was the name of that? Uh, the, the, the knowledge navigator, right? Oh, yeah, back sure. to the knowledge right. navigator idea that we spoke about a few weeks ago, that you were essentially asking the computer p- to perform actions and the computer should be able to understand and perform those actions. Yeah, exactly. No, this is the this is the dream, right? Is that is that one of the drudgeries that we have not been freed from by computers is operating computers. <laughs> and yeah. if you could tell your yeah. computer to do a thing instead of having to click 80 times in order to get it to do that thing, I mean, th- this is to me this is the dream of user automation, which is instead of having to build shortcuts or write scripts, you tell mm-hmm. the computer what you want to do and it does it even better. You could tell it what to do and say, the next time I ask you, just do this thing. Um, but yeah, I think I think I hope we see this. I hope this is the. I mean, when they bought um, workflow and made it shortcuts, they put it in the Siri group for a reason, right? And I think this might be part of the reason. Is automation Siri should be part of automation? I hope so. Okay, Mike, my pick is. AI. I'm going with my AI pick. Uh, yeah. Xcode gets AI features. Okay. That's Copilot, basically. Yeah. 
How you feeling? You any... No, I'm, I'm just wondering. Do you have any like any more th- thoughts on that? This isn't drop. I'm just wondering. What do you think? This is like this is just code completion. Like it, you know. Do you have a sense for what the the like the copilot stuff does in the Microsoft apps? Yeah, I mean, it is, and I've seen this in a bunch of different apps. The code, code completion suggestion, asking for help, asking for a, a routine, a subroutine to be dropped in. Basically, that Apple has trained a model on uh, Swift, at least, if not Objective C, on Swift, and that it will aid you using AI to aid coding in some way. Beyond that, I am not a coder, but like, I would imagine that they're going to look to uh, what Microsoft has done with Copilot as their inspiration. Yeah. I mean the code copilot before they changed the brand to everything being code pilot. You know the one I mean, the one that's that they use in their in their development tools. I remember we we spoke about this for the first time, maybe last year or the year before. Like this felt like the thing that would come first. First. <laughs> but yeah. It, but it right. I mean, we got the transformer model, right? That's what we got. Um as as kind of like the first uh post GPT machine learning feature. We did not get Xcode stuff. I, I think I remember there being a report once that Apple was concerned about accidentally leaking its own code, and that's maybe why this took them a little bit longer. Like they didn't want their internal stuff to be getting out through uh, Xcode AI stuff. So we'll see. Yeah. All right, my next pick. So this is pick number five AI created emoji. Oh, uh, oh wow I'm, okay I'm putting scare quotes around the word emoji uh okay that's because good because they're not going to be emoji uh it will be stickers but they'll look like emoji and apple will call them probably emoji or emoji stickers uh i th- this is something that there has been a bit of smoke around right like i i, I this is a mark Gurman report this kind of feature has existed before. I think Google had a thing called Emoji Kitchen, I think is the name. This just feels like such an Apple thing to do to right. me. I think we spoke about it on the show last week that, you know, the, the, the system's going to be suggesting these handcrafted sticker emoji for you to share with your friends and make your chats more lively. Handcrafted no by the hands of artificial them. intelligence. But sure, nobody's going to use them They're, because it's going to be really <laughs> weird. I mean, or maybe this is how you get your chef's kiss emoji it's, that everybody it's, wants. It's going to be one of those. Um, what, what were they? Were they slofies? It's going to be one of those. Hey, kids, let's make this yeah. a thing, and everybody's going to be like, "Meh, no, we're not." I gonna mean, make or just stickers in general, right? I I, I think they yes. keep trying to make stickers happen. Um, mm-hmm. I I just I don't really don't know. I mean, I could imagine this maybe being fun for a few days, but I don't. Unless this is really going to be very impressive, and that or they are going to do what they actually should do, which is find a way to make them emoji, but then they're only going to work on iOS devices anyway, and it's going to be a bit of a mess. But I do think they're going to go to this well, and and this is a fun thing that they can do that people will think will be fun, and it will also show really well in ads. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And they'll make an ad for it, and they'll be like, "Isn't yeah. it fun?" And everybody else will be like, "Yeah, yeah sure." It's Fine. it's this would be Apple dipping its toe into the generative area in a way that's not going to ups. Mm. No, it's not going to upset people. Yeah, because it's going to be pieces like emoji artists. Yeah, they're going to have out there in the world. They're going to have designed emoji pieces that the AI can use to construct a new emoji. Right, it'll be constructed yeah. from existing emoji lexicon. Uh, mm-hmm. Right, I think that's what's going to mm-hmm. happen here. I so generative so. in the most limited sense, which I think there's going to be a lot of that. If I had to make a prediction. I think there's going to be a lot of that where it's like, oh, you know, usually the AI announcement is like, we have a vast expanse of the world and it'll create things and some of it will be bad and some of it will be interesting and some of it might even be what you'd call good. Um, And then Apple will be like, we have a very limited (laughs) directory of things from which we are choosing and it allows us to keep control because the AI can do what it wants, but only within our area (laughs) and i think that that sounds very apple that's an apple way to do ai is we trained it on a very limited collection of emoji glyphs and that's all it can use so Mm -hmm. how bad could it be and it might still be bad but we'll see what's your fourth round pick? all right my pick i'm gonna go to ios which i haven't picked before and i'm gonna say users can change app icon colors Um, we talked about this last week and I think that I'm going to stand by that speculation. The idea that I don't think Apple's going to just say, although if they did, it would count like, 
if you want to make Facebook green, you can just do it. I think it's going to be a developer story where they're like, aha, we're going to have themes or or we're going to let you choose, just like they do with SF Symbols, choose a layer that will be the where the theme color will be reflected, like a highlight or something like that. And that if a developer like just absolutely hates the idea, they just won't participate, right? Like I don't think Apple is going to go full on like, yeah, you just change it and nobody ma- nobody cares just about your brand, do whatever. I don't think they're going to do that. But I do think there's going to be some sort of theming involving the coloring of app icons. And that's why uh, I think this pick is broad enough to encompass that idea that like, if you want to say I want orange, you'll get orange probably from some, if not all, or in some way that may or may not be satisfying. But app icon colors, I do think it's going to happen. Someone wrote in uh, to upgrade feedback and mentioned, I'll get their name in a moment, and mentioned the idea that uh, tvOS and then I thought visionOS app icons are created in layers, right? So oh, yeah. you give Apple like a file which is layered. Yeah, it's how you get the that, spatial kind of effect. Yeah. This could be the basis for mm-hmm. changing some element. Maybe you would be able to specify which element could be Right, which, which is so. which is how SF symbols basically work. Is that there's a portion of the of the symbol that is designated as being kind of like attached to a color, um, so you don't just recolor the whole symbol. You can recolor a portion of the symbol. It's abstracting the the design of what's colorable and what's not. And I could totally see them doing something like that. I can't find the name of that person in the feedback system, but if that was you, thank you very much. That thank you, person. But yeah, I think that that could be a way to do it, right? And then developers could provide some. But still, I, I, this one for me was low down in my picks because yeah. I remain skeptical yes. of it. Mike, it's my highest remaining iOS pick. So I've decided to pick it here because I think it's the most likely of all the things on our list. And I don't have an iOS pick. So there it is. Okay. Ooh. Now I'm wondering if I if I should start jumping ahead to some of my mandatory picks, or if I, I'm just mm-hmm. going to keep with the things that I think are most likely. Uh, I'm going, so I am actually going to take this time to at least get one more mandatory pick off the board, which is a Vision OS pick. Oh, and my sixth round pick is that we will be able to rearrange apps in Vision OS. Because my word, if they don't do that, the platform's over. <laughs> if I can't move my apps around, what are we doing here, you know? The, the, the thing the thing that could come back to bite me with this is they might not show this in the keynote. I, I had this second on my Vision OS list, but I didn't have it rated very high. And my thought is this, which is one, will they show it? And two, will they really do that? Or will there be some other like concept for apps and I I don't, or will they say, you know, there's not that many apps. It's not that big a deal. We'll just leave them in alphabetical order for a little while longer. It, they should totally do it, but will they do mm-hmm. it? And it, what's my confidence in them being able to do that uh, and show it? And I'm not clear how much is going to be in vision OS that this would seem to be table stakes. Right. And yet here we are. So and yet. maybe, maybe it's, I, I think, I think it's not a bad choice from you. I think this is a choice you need to make. Yeah, yeah. I, this is the two Vision OS picks that I had highest. I do actually have some more in my shortlist, but it was yours and mine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope it happens. I mean, really, it needs to happen. <laughs> it's really annoying. Also, I think that the Vision OS apps list is too small on top of that. Like, it takes a little tiny field of view. Like, you can have, you can have more apps there, too. Yeah, especially because of the amount of effort it takes to get to the fourth page. Right. Yeah, like I know. So of, many swipes. It's a big action that you're taking each time. So it would be nicer to to have some kind of, and maybe that's what they'll do. Right? They'll they'll have like a new way to do it, and it'll be more rearrangeable. I kind of think about how you know you look at like the Apple Watch, right? Like the Apple Watch had its idea of doing it, and then it created a brand new idea of doing it, and they have both of them. But right. You know, so maybe we'll get a list. Is what I'm saying. You know. Uh, yeah, or or like an immersive view where your entire space is filled with apps and you have to <laughs> swivel around to do it. Don't do that, Apple. Don't do that. Yeah, you can put one over that you have to walk over to press the icon. Yeah, like no, you, you just have just to swivel in your chair. You have to be like, shh, woo, it's over there, right? Like it's a 360 app world that you're inside you of. You are the app icon. Oh, boy. That sounds terrible. The app icon is you. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is your sixth round pick, Jason? Well, I wrote the book on it, literally, and so I'm going to choose AI-powered tools for editing photos, which I think is a pretty good bet. Apple, I mean, everybody else is doing it. Apple has really resisted doing retouching tools in photos in general. Like, there's not even a, a retouch, basic retouch tool in photos for iOS, even though there has been on the Mac for a while now. The one on the Mac isn't very good. I've been using Photomator for years to do this. Photomator does a great job. It's got, you know, AI enhance. Also, I'll say there's probably some machine learning stuff that's already in photos that they'll label. <laughs> Right. They're like, oh, it's an enhance. That's really just an improved enhance of what they already did, but they can call it yeah. ML. But anyway, so I, I just think there will be ways in the Photos app. It's one of the most straightforward ways to shout out AI. They've been using AI tools in photos for years. They may say that. They may like Photos has had AI tools in it for 10 years because it kind of has. Um, but I do think that they have to do that thing where you can e it'll either be smart retouching of like skin or it'll be remove a person in the background but it's or it'll be like an ai adjustment where it's like they call it out and say oh we can we can you know use ai to adjust your photo to make it look good or fill a, a particular kind of mood or like there'll be stuff like that in there i i really think so that's why i'm going to pick it That was actually going to be my pick. That was the one. That's, this is awkward for me. Like it, I bumped my Vision OS pick above this one. And I think this is a good one. Mike, this was going to be my pick last time, and then I got too scared about iOS, so I picked the iOS uh, pick. And then see, strategy, it's happening. It's happening. You know, this this is a fun. This is a fun game play right. for the WWDC. But yeah, I think that this is as far as AI stuff goes. Any an easy one for them to do something in? I don't imagine them going as hard as Google has. I, I would be surprised if they had like a add stuff to this image. Yeah, kind of I think it's going to be know? more like I mean, like literally. I know that these are the demos, but like literally, I had a photo when we went to Hawaii a few years ago that I used for, that that was my my wife and daughter on a beach, and there was some guy walking in the background, and I was like goodbye take that guy out and photomator did yeah you know, i just really circled him and then photomator replaced him and he was gone that is great it makes your i know it's technically you're manipulating photo but whatever like it made a unusable photo usable and mm. um that's the stuff they need to do but i agree there's probably not going to be like circle select the sky and tell it to be nighttime or what like i don't think it's going to do stuff or put a unicorn somewhere right like no i don't think it's going to do any of that stuff do you think they would do something like the the best take feature where you could change people's heads i think it's possible that they will do something like that where you take a burst and then it it, it tries to merge them together into the best into the best take out of the merge out of pieces it takes of the merge so many photos anyway right like they they yeah. they can like tons and tons and tons so every yeah. time you take it, a photo they would, take like nine photos would not surprise i mean they already do that right but would they yeah. add a little layer where they where they offer you my, again my guess is they wouldn't just do it they would like offer you an upgraded version that's using yeah. as somebody who sat in photoshop i've got a a poster in my living room of my kids on the one of the lions at trafalgar square and it is literally made up of three different stills that i took because none of them was quite right and i put them together like huh oh, i'd really like it if my photos app could do that and be like oh yeah here's yeah. your kids where they're both smiling and and like I had to I had to bodge that together myself. So it would be really great if that feature was there, even if it was just an option where Apple was like, you know, none of these looked great, but I put them together for you. That would be fine. The one for me is blinking. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would want to blinking, smiling, so whatever blinking. it is, and some of that can be detected actually when you're taking the photo. But yeah, to to be able to analyze, take a burst, even if you don't, even if you generally just throw it away and analyze it, analyze the faces, and try to make sure that the faces are all looking at the camera or you know smiling or whatever that you're or not blinking, that would be great. You know, I don't think you need to do a burst. Like, look at live photos. Well, iPhotos is lower resolution than the actual photo, but they it do. Got, it's they do better over time, though. They've yeah, it's better, the resolution but it's not the resolution of the full photo. And I think that's what Apple would want to do. But you could definitely take multiples as a burst or 
as a secret burst that you then process, right? Burst. Which is what they do anyway. They're already taking multiples. So imagine them taking multiples. They could even use, and they might even brag about it, like use the accelerometer on the camera to realize that you're holding the camera still and, and analyzing the photo. So you know that this is basically the same photo in the very in a very short window and just keep capturing as long as you're you're holding the, the camera up so that you can do those merges. Um, there's lots of smart stuff they could do to solve a problem, right? Because this is, yeah. when we talk about AI, so much AI hype is about a, a, a solution in search of a problem. The, this is a real problem. And I know that Google and others have done work in this area, a lot of work in this area, and Apple hasn't. But like, it doesn't change the fact that it is a problem that needs, that, that would help people to have a solution, a usable photo for your Christmas card. Because both your kids have their eyes open in the picture, even though when you press the lens or, or the the shutter, one of them had their eyes closed. But a yeah. second later, they opened it, and the system recognized that, and you were still holding steady. Like that is a huge solution. That yeah, right now you can use somebody else's platform for it, or you can do what I do, which is have to bring it into Photoshop and align the images, and then try to blend them. And it's a, I mean, it took me like an hour to get that photo ready for the poster that's on our wall in our living room. So yeah, let's make it happen. All right. This episode is brought to you by Tailscale. Tailscale is a programmable networking software that is private and secure by default. And it's the easiest way to connect devices and services to each other wherever they are. It's super secure, providing remote access to production, databases, servers, Kubernetes, and more. And it's fast, like really fast. Plus, it grants privacy for everyone and every organization. Tailscale is an intuitive, programmable way to manage a private network, including a zero-trust network access that every organization can use. With Tailscale, you can build simple networks across complex infrastructure, use their ACL policies to securely control access to devices and services with their next-gen network access controls, and transform networking and security with a modernized set of solutions built on revolutionary protocols designed for today's mobile and multi-cloud era. Try Tailscale for free for up to 100 devices and 3 users at tailscale.com slash RelayFM, no credit card required. That is tailscale.com slash RelayFM to try Tailscale for free for up to 100 devices and 3 users with no credit card required. Our thanks to Tailscale for their support of this show and RelayFM. All right, so our next pick, we're into round number seven Ooh. now. Oh, boy. I'm going to rip off the Band-Aid. Apple announces partnership with OpenAI for AI features. Wow. It's been heavily reported. Yes. To the point where, since we last recorded, I think the information had reported that, like, the deal is done. Yep. The shape of this, I don't know, really. And I think we're going to have to wait and see. How much would they took? Would they even mention it? We don't know. I think they will, for all of the reasons that it makes sense to talk about AI at all, right? Whether you like them or hate them, OpenAI have the market at the moment. Like it's theirs. They are kind of synonymous with the AI moment. People know who they are. Sure. They are obviously the leader in some metrics. They are the company that I think kind of kicked off where we are and and are ahead in a bunch of areas. If Apple's going to partner with someone, I think they're going to partner with them. Uh, I hope that they have more than one partnership, but I'm picking OpenAI as a partnership that they will have. I think it will happen. Um, I think you'll get this point. But I think they're going to... Okay, they're going to play up open AI in the sense that they want to be recognized as using one of the leaders in this field for some features. And yet I think they're going to downplay open AI, if that makes any sense. I think they need yeah. to cite it and they want to cite it, but I don't think they're happy about it. Um, and I think it's going to be one of those things where it's like a logo on a slide or maybe even just a mention and no logo. I don't personally, I don't expect that we're going to see like, a return to the stage for Mr. Pop Collars. I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be like, 
oh yeah, and if you want, you can do this thing with OpenAI. Or we partner with OpenAI, so if you want to do this thing, you can do that. Or yeah. Siri, if if, if uh, you want further information, Siri can talk to OpenAI's, uh, G to G GPT. They may even also just say chat GPT and not even mention OpenAI, right? They might do that. Like, if you really want that, you, you can use other chatbots such as chat GPT, right? And which leaves open the door that they'll make deals with Google, for example, for Gemini, right? I think they're going to, mm -hmm. so this is the thing is, I think they need to do it because they want to be seen as having this play. But uh, so I think you're you're going to get the point. But I I would predict the downplaying of it, like that they're going to toss it off as like because not only do some people have strong feelings about OpenAI negatively, but also it does make Apple seem like they had to go outside for help. So I think they're going to downplay it, but mention it. I would say that that's most likely, especially considering the recent controversies. You know that maybe it's a thing where hey, look, we're doing this, but let's not. I am leaning towards them not having Sam Altman come out now, like where there was a point where I think that was a definite. Yeah. And I don't think that will well, happen. And there's, but I could imagine them saying that, hey, and when you want to yeah. do this, it goes out to our partner, OpenAI, or one of our partners, including OpenAI. Da, 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 da. And now that it's not a stage show, there's no come out on stage anymore, right? You would have to, you would have to make a much more integrated thing with a partner to have them in your video, which you could also yeah. take out later. Um, I think that maybe, maybe Sam Altman comes on stage, maybe if it's a live show at the Steve Jobs Theater, but it's not. And so I think that it won't happen that way. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I guarantee it, like anything could happen, but I wouldn't put money on it for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, with my pick, number seven, um, I'm going to go with AI enhancements to iWork apps. Oh. I feel like this is a quick win for Apple to say, you know, we'll let you uh, start a business document and pages will, pages will prompt you and, and put some things in there or they'll suggest uh, a next paragraph for you or some of this basic text generative AI or there's something in Keynote. Like you could be say like, you know, build me, you know, build me some bullet points about this or build me a slide deck about this. I just, I feel like there's something, uh, an AI related thing that they can roll into an app. Honestly, I think it's easier for them to roll AI stuff into apps than the OS anyway. And so mm -hmm. being able to do that, my my guess would be it's going to be some tech stuff in pages because that's the easiest thing for them to do. Hmm. So I don't feel super confident about this, but like yeah. it, it among what's out there, I think that this is one of the more, we're, we're at the point now where my confidence level has dropped and I'm just trying a bunch of stuff that I think is possible, but not necessarily at the highest rate of likelihood. I, I didn't really think about this one, to be honest, uh, 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 I see what you're saying, especially in pages, but I wonder if they will have any enhancements that are specific to these apps that wouldn't just work in any app, you know? Mm. Well, I mean, I guess that's a question. I, 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 if, I mean, my argument would be that if they say you can generate, auto-generate a paragraph in pages or notes, yeah. that it still counts because yeah it's yeah in it pages. would but i'm wondering if they would do that you know that, yeah. that's the thing it's like if it's just text generation it's like you can just do it wherever right. you write your things well, you know i like this pick i think uh, it's okay my eighth round pick right. is that some ai features will be labeled as coming next year Ooh, all right i, I think, think this, this is a little bit landing... risky okay i think it's a little bit risky i think it's it could very well happen only because Coming next year is a tough one, right? Like they would rather not. They would rather say late later this year and then announce at the end of the year, oh, that'll actually be coming in the spring. <laughs> but will they just come up right up and say uh, coming next year? Maybe they will. Maybe that that's what it's going to take. So I think it's a really good, uh, a, a good gamble to take here. Here's what I imagine for this is like there's some feature where like, and we want to show you a preview of something we have coming next year. Uh, could be. Da, 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 could da, da, be. Da, that's what I think. And this is just leaning into, do I believe that they were caught out? And the answer is yes. And so I expect that there will be at least something that they will want to show because they're impressed by it. They think it's cool, but they just straight up know it's not coming this time. Or it's something that will only run on certain hardware that they want to make sure is well seated before they release it. You right. Know? Yep. Like, maybe there's something that will just run on the next iPhone, so there's no point shipping it 
in when Iowa ships. Mm -hmm. So they'll just say it will come next year. Yeah, I, I think it absolutely could. I, I What made me hesitate to pick this, and I had it on my longer list of possibilities, what made me hesitate is them not saying, no, 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 it's happening now. They might right? not want to admit it, right? Yeah, yeah they might exactly. not want to admit it. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm going to choose AI power transcription in notes slash voice memos. This is rumored. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fairly straightforward thing to expand transcription to other places so that if you leave yourself a voice memo, it comes back as text um, or maybe even syncs to notes or something, right? Like maybe there's some, actually once you can make voice memos into text, maybe you could just do that there or you could just leave a voice memo in notes. But this is the idea of making audio system wide audio that contains spoken word into the words so that you can search mm -hmm. them and see them. So yeah. I think that this is a, a pretty likely scenario. My ninth round pick. Mm -hmm. I'm picking my iPad pick because I'm getting scared. Okay. <laughs> Which I hate this pick, but it's the only thing that I could kind of imagine. And it leads back to what you were saying earlier of like, sometimes the iPhone gets a thing and then the next year the iPad gets a thing. Last year, the iPhone got standby mode. And I think, especially with the new OLED iPads, it would be kind of cool yeah. for my iPad to have something on the screen where even when I'm not using it. And, and my hope would be that it wouldn't necessarily be when just when the iPad is charging, that they might come up with something else for the iPad. Um, but some kind of standby mode for iPadOS is something I could maybe see oh, happening. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. I don't think it's going to happen, but widgets. I would love it. <laughs> So Wouldn't it be great cool. to be able to take an iPad it. and uh, especially an OLED iPad, you know, and have it also be your status board when you're not using it? Wouldn't that be nice? Because mm -hmm. I feel like what you could do here is you just put it on the OLED ones and say it's the standby mode, but essentially it's always on display. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I, I would love I think it'd be so cool. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love it. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I have not a Look, lot. I don't of think confidence. it's going to happen either. But yeah. I'm trying to, you know, we have yeah, no, rules. Here. You got to, you got to do it. This is the rules, right? You <laughs> got to make an iPad it. pick uh -huh. here. Uh huh. All right. Um, with my ninth pick, I am going to choose uh, some iPhone AI mm. features are limited to the most recent Pro phones. Yeah. So this, this is this is. Uh, high up. Now they're gonna have to mention it, but this is a little bit like remember when they did the the stage manager stuff and they said it's only in the most recent i uh, you know iPad Pro or whatever or iPad Air, like there was like one model that could do stage manager. Or multi no, it was multitasking. It was the it was multitasking, and they were like, no, no, we got to gate this, and everybody had to buy that iPad in order to try out that yep. feature that summer. Everyone went f where that was in a San Francisco year that year. That Apple store sold so many iPads, including one to me. Yeah, I went and bought. I think it was the iPad Air two or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, I went and bought one because previously it was like what was the, that? It was almost seemed like an unchanged, unneeded device. Right. But then it turned out, oh, actually. You have to have it for this stuff. Right. And so that's my theory is that, that I think for some of this AI, we're going to have a lot of like uh, requirements, like system requirements uh, that are going to come up uh, and, and, you know, like Apple Silicon only for Mac and and uh, who knows what it'll be for iPad. But I think for iPhone, my feeling is it's going to be iPhone 15 Pro and later. Yeah. Mark Gurman, and I think it was in Power On last week, was talking about this a little bit. And I think his thinking was it would be the 15 Pro phones would get some features and then all 16 phones. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think going forward, they're going to have to put it on everything. But if, for 15, it might be limited to just the Pro, which, again, gives the summer for people to test these features with a 15 Pro, which is important. Otherwise, why why announce a feature that doesn't run on current hardware? It doesn't make sense. But I, in that scenario, I would be, I think, a little bit disappointed that it wouldn't run on the regular 15. Sure. That That, I think, would be... You know, a, a little bit where I'm like, what are you doing over there? Like, really, what are you doing? You know, like, what is going on here? W were you really that, you know what I mean? Like, is it that far behind? Like, if you're going to say these features only run on pro devices, fine. You know what I mean? They'll run on pro devices. But how did we get to a scenario where you released a phone and then nine months later released features that couldn't run on it? Like, h how did you get yourself into this situation? You know, that, that would be the question I would have to ask. Like, I, I think that would be, it would be, weird to me mm -hmm. 
All right, my 10th round pick. I'm Oof. picking my backup list pick. Oh, yay. Hey, here it and, goes. And backup list. Can't wait. Purely comes from a please fix this Apple. It's been so many years, and I don't know why we're still in this mess. Redesigned notification center in macOS. Just show me more than three notifications. You know? That's all I really want. Just go back to what it used to be like when I would click the, the date and it would show me all my notifications in a list. Why do you just show me three when I can now put widgets wherever I want? Who's putting widgets there anymore anyway? They all go on their desktop. Okay. Just, just show me my notifications. All right. It is just showing more notifications enough to get you this pick? Because that's not a redesign to just list more. Well, I think so. I mean, I think it's a new notification center, right? Like it, it looks different. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. You tell me. I mean, I mean, we can change it. I, this again, uh, just gentlemen's agreement. Uh, yeah, we can do that. But you could change it to be like update to notification center. But let's leave it. We, we know what it means, right? I'll I'll give you that. If it's just like it's, let's say it's been this way for so many years, if it's no longer this way, that's a redesign. Okay. You know. <laughs> like, All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Thank you. They they will need to call out notification center in Mac OS and yeah. say that it's been improved, essentially, is what That's the key, right? Is like we need to see in right, the cause, video because it's a keynote draft. Notification center has changed. It's a keynote draft. Exactly. They may have like a detail page somewhere that shows notification center, Doesn't but if matter. they don't say or show on a slide, mm -hmm. oh, we redesigned mm -hmm. notification center, which honestly my feeling is this year, if they do literally anything on Mac OS, it will be in a slide because they won't have that much. Yeah, I could imagine that one of those bento slides, and it's like yeah. notifications and exactly uh, what was your pick uh, that we could oh settings system settings redesign you know blah 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 if that at all. All right, I am gonna make uh, surprisingly an iOS pick, even though uh, I was afraid of iOS. Well, my first pick was a, uh, or no, I made an iOS pick late in the round three, right? So I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back there because I I am now in my lower rounds as we both are. And sometimes you just got to pick things that are maybe uh, a little more risky. And so I'm going to pick another Mark Gurman rumor that I, uh, I'm i thinking of David Smith as I as I do this too, hmm. is uh, topographic maps added to maps in iOS. So they're already on the watch, um, for but for hiking and things like that on, uh, on when you just got your iPhone with you, add a topo map. So it's a rumor. I like the idea. They've already got the data set. So let's do it. Why not? Right. This is on Apple Watch. Uh, Apple Watch OS, the latest Watch OS. You can do that. You can see a topo map. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, okay. I can I can be on board with this one. This wasn't one that I had in my short list. Uh, I think yeah. I missed that Mark Gurman to pick that actually, but I still don't think that I would have. Yeah. There's there's a rumor about a couple one. new maps features, uh, and I found this one felt a little more likely than the other one, but I really was just grasping at straws at that point. Because this to me feels like one of those things, like what you were mentioning. Would this, would this, make it into the keynote? No. I, don't I mean, know. Ben, bento box uh, animation or an aside that Possibly. says, "Oh yeah," and, and yeah. maps on Something iOS happened. is getting a lot of our great maps features from, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever, indeed. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. You may not know this, but when you open an incognito window. You know, you, you see that note, right? That there's a your activity could still be visible to your employer score or ISP. You might ignore it. But if you want people to stop seeing the sites that you visit at any point, you need to be using ExpressVPN. Because if you think about the times when you've used Wi-Fi in a public place, without Ex ExpressVPN, every site that you visit could be logged by the admin of that network, even when you're in incognito mode. And this is the same for your ISP. They could see and record your browsing data. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays just that, private to you. For whatever reason you want your information to be private, ExpressVPN can make sure that it is. ExpressVPN works on all your devices and is incredibly easy to use. The app is just one button. You tap it to connect and your browsing activity is secure from prying eyes. I love how easy it is to enable ExpressVPN. It just lives up in my menu bar on my Mac, for example, and I just click it, and I just say, yes, I want to be protected. Or even, what location do you want to change me to? I use this all the time, especially when I'm traveling. You know, I want to catch up with the show that I'm watching at home, but I'm in the States, and it won't work. I can say, hey, tell this network that I'm in the, in the UK, and it will do that. I refresh the app, and I can go back to watching that show. Very easy. 
So stop letting strangers invade your online privacy and protect yourself today at expressvpn.com slash upgrade. That is expressvpn.com slash upgrade. Go there and get three extra months free. That is expressvpn.com slash upgrade to learn more and get three extra months for free. Our thanks to ExpressVPN for their continued support of this show and Relay FM. We now move in to round number 11. Ooh. I'm going to go back to AI here. All right. And say AI improvements to spotlight search. All right. Okay. Interesting. I feel like this is one of those ones where it's an easy call out for them um, to, to talk about how like the power of our new AI system, it's been easier than ever to find things in your devices. Like, I feel like Spotlight is something that they have called out multiple times with Siri intelligence improving over the years and and or there'll be new things that are going to be in Spotlight that weren't there before made, made possible by the power of AI. So that's why I think we're going to see improvements to Spotlight. It feels like an easy one to me. Uh, even for them to say like, hey, using the power of our AI system, we know what you're looking for and can surface content for you in Spotlight. Da, da, da. You know, Maybe Spotlight's going to become more of a home, a hub uh, than it has been before. Okay. All right. I think it's definitely possible. There are things that they could do in, in Spotlight. It's a good place to pour AI stuff, right? Yep. It's just, it's literally a prompt that you type things in. And so you can put all sorts of different AI generated things in there if you wanted yep. to. So, like, yeah. you know, earlier on you were talking about those, like, notes, voice memo transcription thing. You might be able to search that from Spotlight, right? Like, you know, you search a thing and it can, using the power of AI, can search inside of other stuff you have sure. in the I system. Mean, it so, already does that, right? So that would be a, a logical, yep. like, if it's just translating it, then it would have access to all those transcripts. It's an interesting idea. Yep. And again, it's one of these things where it's like, yeah, they're kind of doing it, but they don't say it's AI that does it right now. So maybe they'll say it's AI that does it now, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just like photo editing. All right. I'm going to stay on the AI train too. And I'm going to say that they're going to have a some sort of message composition um, in mail mm. using AI. Hmm. I don't so know if it'll necessarily generate, be... Generate the, a reply to this message, which is jolly, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the the Google... Yeah, yeah. I, I, here's an emoji. Just respond with an emoji. We can do that. No, I mean, my idea here is Google already has started to do this with uh, Gmail. It's the idea that uh, you can analyze the message that came in and you're doing a reply and it's going to suggest something more than like a word or a sentence. It's going to say, you know maybe give you options or maybe just sort of give you a grayed out kind of like, would you like this basic reply and people will be annoyed by it and maybe it'll be turned off. But like I, this is, it's actually a place that's gained, gained uh, traction. I think there are a lot of people who appreciate the fact that if I'm replying to a message, uh, that it, it knows what you want to say, especially in some contexts. And you can be like, yep, that's exactly what I want to say. Uh, or pick from like yes or no, and it writes a yes or no for you about like, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Or great, that sounds great, let's do it. Um, and not have to worry about it. I don't personally like that, but I feel like that's a thing that you could demo and explain why it solves a problem and explain why Apple has taken great care and what it does. And it's existing technology that everybody has seen. So, um, you know, we're at the ends of, ends of the draft now, but I think that's one place that they could add some AI seasoning fairly easily yeah i was just thinking as you were talking then right about like mail is an interesting thing because there is a there is a, an entire amount of large language of your own right that they could they could learn yes. from to build these things yeah. but then it made me think about like if they're doing this kind of stuff on device right like that they're they're going to use their systems to kind of train on your data how hot are these phones going to get every time you get a new one it, it, right, like right. how much of this stuff oh, yeah. is passed from phone to phone, and if they're gonna train on your information, like the the setup process where the phone the battery life is terrible and run it, the phone runs hot for a bit, like I feel like that is just gonna get worse and worse yeah. with with some of these things. Well, so they're, it's gonna be they're interesting gonna, to see how they handle that. Yeah, they're gonna need to be much more intelligent about sort of like when do you run those tasks and don't run them in certain circumstances. But people want those features right away. But you're like, yeah, but I can't run the phone when it's on ba on battery and I need to regulate the heat and all of those things about it. But you're right, it'll happen. Twelfth and final pick. Yeah. Ooh, I have seven things here mm -hmm. left, and I'm trying 
to decide which of these I want to go for. Oh boy. Um, I'm going to make a Vision OS pick. Okay. Because I, w I don't want it to just be another AI pick. So, like, I'm just going to put this out there so you can take it if you want to. The lo the pick that I had next, like, in my list um, was uh, auto -compl auto complete expand into complete sentences, right? Like, I feel like that is a very likely thing, but I don't want to pick that. I, I want to pick something different. And so I'm going to go with multiple Mac displays in Vision OS. Oh, I had that on my list. That was one of my possible picks here because I, I think that yeah. that's actually a, a decent chance of happening. Multiple, uh, multiple if, Mac displays. If they've put work into vision os which i do believe they will have and and i hope that they've that they've prioritized it even with all the other things going on this feels like a thing to add that people would really dig and we have heard that this is running inside of apple at least somewhere right like that that this is a thing that they've been trying and i would love for them to find a way to handle this so i could have two displays on my mac and you know, two Mac displays inside of Vision OS that yeah. I could that I would be able to use. Um, I think it would be able to increase productivity. Even if they did a thing, I don't, and I don't know how I would feel about this, we'd have to just score it. Like you could just have Mac apps that are like their own displays or, or whatever in, inside sure. of Vision OS. But I would like to see them have multiple monitors that I could use inside of my Vision Pro. I like it. That's my final pick. Wow. Okay. Um. I'm left with the dregs now, because <laughs> that that might have been my pick. Mm. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, I just hate the idea that what I choose here might determine who wins and loses, right? Like, because it's it's here. Well, at the every end. pick is that, right? I know every it's true, but it, it's just, um, oh, wow. Um, I'm going to pick out of left field more information on CarPlay. Oh, 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 wow. Uh, wh now, See, this, now is... this would be interesting. I like this. I like this. It's in our list, and it literally is more information on CarPlay. What does that mean? It means that at some point, they're going to say something about CarPlay that isn't CarPlay exists, that they're going to be like, we did this thing to CarPlay, or uh, we've got CarPlay 2 and more people are adopting it, or it's going great. You know, if it's just a restatement of existing things, it's not more information. But if it's literally, this is one of those like CarPlay mentioned with a little bit of an asterisk is basically what this is, which is some, give me something about CarPlay, something about CarPlay. The reason I find this one particularly interesting is it was, I don't know, two or three years ago now that they showed off next generation CarPlay. Right. And what has become exceedingly obvious over this amount of time is no car makers want to do this, like, except for like one. Like, more and more car makers, and Neil Patel keeps uh, interviewing car makers and CEO, uh, C car CEOs on Dakota, and he keeps asking them, and they're all saying they don't want to do it. I yeah. Think Mercedes Benz were the most recent to yeah. say no, uh, which I think means. For Apple to improve CarPlay, they actually need to take it in a different direction. Right. The direction that they wanted to go down, which is like, hey, we are the operating system in the car. Car manufacturers don't want that. And they run risk, I think, of CarPlay being dropped. Yeah. And yeah. I think that Apple needs to maybe make, like, you know, to save face a little bit that this is an option, but that there is a new version of CarPlay which looks like that, but doesn't necessarily require that you give over the dials of the car. Yeah, I think that so, I think I mean most of that already exists in CarPlay. They have support for multiple displays and different shaped displays and all of that. But yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it's a statement about like a change in direction. I don't know. I just I mean my pick here really is that they often talk about CarPlay at WWDC because it does get updated when iOS gets updated and it is strategically important to them. So do they mention it and give more information in some way? I I'm going to I'm going to put down that they will because they sometimes do. Mhm. Mm That's the draft. I feel Oof. the most uncertain about this draft than I have in a while, which Interesting. makes me think that this rule change was a pretty good one. Yeah. Like I just feel like there it it made it a bit more frantic feeling that 
I felt like I had to make picks that I didn't want to make at the point that I was making. Yep. Them, right? Which is Leaving that's a good that's a good table. thing. It's I mean, and it was gentle, yeah. right? It was only five mandatory categories mm-hmm. out of twelve mm-hmm. picks, so it was it was gentle, but it still added a little bit of that feeling. Mm-hmm. I like it. We'll 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 muse about it and for next time about whether this is it may only make sense for certain kinds of events like WWDC. I think WWDC it may be it may yeah. only really make sense for for it because it is the only keynote where we can feel somewhat confident about what's going to be there. Right. Right. Where like they we because they say in advance you're going to hear about this 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 and this right from an operating system standpoint. Exactly. Even if they don't share a lot of stuff so, during it, but just, like any September event, we don't know if it's going to be any more than the iPhone. One of the motivations for doing it this way, also in addition to just sort of like spicing it up a little, like we said, is um, Mike originally did this draft as uh, as more hard and fast categories, and I felt like mm-hmm. the problem is that almost everything's going to be an AI announcement, and that everything yeah. else is on the sidelines, and there's no hardware, and there's no like, and I thought, well, that's really boring if we have three ai picks and then a whole bunch of things that we don't think are really going to happen and so we led it led to sort of this more flexible format and i like it i kind of like it i don't know depending on rumors we might do something like this for other events right where if we feel like there's really only kind of two things or whatever but for wwdc especially this year it seemed like the right way to go yeah, definitely. This was a conversation, a really good conversation we had during uh, Upgrade Plus. Yeah. Week, oh, yes. You got to, everybody got to hear all the details yeah. in Upgrade Plus last week. By the way, in uh, Upgrade Plus this week, there is if you're if you're asking what happened to the uh, guess what Mac OS uh, California feature is going to get the the name uh, for Mac OS next year, we have moved that into a separate but related competition that will be in Upgrade yeah. Plus. Do you want to say what it's called? The California Bear Trophy. The California Bear Trophy will be decided in Upgrade Plus. Go to getupgradeplus.com to sign up if you haven't already, and thank you for your support. I will just say, like I'll say it here too, uh, if you've ever supported us or if you currently do, uh, this is basically around the time that we launched the the uh, Upgrade yes. Plus in 2020. So I just want to thank everyone for their support, uh, whether you have ever been a member or whether you are run- one right now. We genuinely really appreciate it. Before we wrap up this week, uh, we said we would talk about, and I want to talk about a little bit more about What If, uh-huh. uh, the Vision OS experience. Um, you've written a review about it because uh, we were a little bit constrained about what we could talk about uh, last time. Um, and I just wanted to follow up and just say, like, this I place. just had such a good time with this. Like, I, 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 as a huge Marvel fan, this was incredible incredible for me i got goosebumps on three separate occasions going through the what if experience like even just at the beginning when you're inside the marvel studios logo it's like oh yeah they they have a moment where you're actually flying as the marvel is flying out you're in you're inside it it's uh very funny in it very funny um yeah this is just it was really great and i think that this is kind of for me the perfect kind of encapsulation of what vision pro is capable of from a all the senses that it has you know like the fact that you know where the the portals that one comes from and the space and the fact that they're always looking at you i thought was really interesting um if you're sitting up or like uh, standing up sitting down like the characters are always looking at you like it's just like a lot of really interesting technology that's going on here and just like the hand tracking for the spell casting it's very good. The good spatial mechanic. audio, incredible. Mm-hmm. For like, there's this one part where you're having to like shoot from your hand, like kind of like uh, some kind of spell to to destroy these aliens or whatever. And the spatial audio will indicate to you where they're shooting at you from, so you can turn around. Yeah. You've got shield. Like it's, it's very, it's very active in the moments that it is active, but by and large, it is a passive experience, right? As you said in your review, it it's not a game. It's, There's game-like elements within a story. So I was thinking about it and and uh, had come to this conclusion, and then I saw David Smith post on Mastodon about it too, which is like feels like an amusement park ride. That that is how I would say it. Is it's like an, it, one of those interactive amusement park rides a little bit, where like you're on rails and you know whether you shoot at the Spider-Man villains or at Buzz Lightyear targets or whatever. Like as you're going through, doesn't really matter. The story continues to go. You you know you. You, at the most, the story won't progress until you do the thing, but it's not like you can get shot and die and then the thing doesn't happen. Like, that's not what it is. So it's very on rails. Um, and I came out at the end thinking, yeah, it's basically like an hour long amusement park ride 
which mm-hmm. is pretty cool because most of those amusement park rides are very short. Uh, but that's what it was kind of like. And it was a fun experience. It's not a game, nor is it a video. It is this inter immediate step and uh yeah i had a lot of fun with it i think and it's, it's built obviously to show off the vision pro's features so it's leaning into all the things the vision pro can do including augmented reality and environments some really beautiful environment design that they do uh and hand right. tracking so yeah the and the performances are really good too like just in general the, like the visuals the the audio like yeah. the acting right it's, there's just like good performances all around like this is the kind of thing too where i could imagine like all right so you've built this could there be another one, right? Like, I hope there will be, right? That Like, you build this technology and you could have periodic releases of new episodes of this what-if story. Um, I liked it. The, the, the choreography was really good, um, which is an interesting challenge because there's, like, fighting that's occurring between superheroes and Europe, like, playing a part in it. Well, they have to do it in such a way that the fight can continue to occur even if you're taking a while to do a thing. So, like, just from a, a yeah. direction standpoint, it's really good. Um, before we wrap up on this, I want to talk about the end part. So, if you don't want to be spoiled for the end of the what-if experience, you skip. can skip to the next chapter. Now. All right. The moment where the Watcher shows you the two sets of stones and you get to snap oh my i was just so excited about that yeah like, it's it's th- the one legitimate cho- the one legitimate choose your own, own adventure moment and the whole thing yeah. is there because i talked to them about it there's a, a couple mentions of it in the in my story um i talked to the the, the interaction designer and and he, he admitted like yeah you, we can't do branching where we've got like 80 different scenes and a user only f- plays three of them because each of them is incredibly expensive. So they have them all. But at the very end, you get to make a choice between A and B, and we won't go into the details of the spoiling. And then you need to make a Thanos-style uh, snap of your fingers in order for it to happen. And it is a beautifully realized moment that really gives you, uh, yeah, kind of gives you chills, right? Because you get to do the snap, yeah. well, a it snap. Did. It did for me. Yeah. Because when it's like, oh, just snap your fingers. I was like, oh my God. It's like, that is so good. And also, again, like I had no idea the Vision Pro could detect that. Right. right? Like that was impressive on its own, right? That yeah. like a finger snap, it, yep. it can know what that, in that there. looks like or sounds like or, or whatever that that was impressive and then yeah we won't spot but then there are two endings and the easter eggs in those endings are fantastic they're so good uh and so yeah it's i really had such a great time with this i i, I love it like i really love it yeah it was good it's a it's a fun thing great demo uh shows off what the potential of vision pro is and uh yeah i, I really enjoyed it all right so next week obviously we'll be wwdc you're gonna be uh in you're gonna be at apple park right uh yeah i'm gonna be at apple park next monday and uh we will record a podcast next monday i don't know where it may be back at my hotel it may be in a car it may be at somebody's house it may be at apple park i don't know i honestly Mm -hmm. don't know but uh we will do it somewhere uh, yeah, people, I'm so, going to be in London. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to WWDC yeah. this year. I have yeah. some family commitments. I, I, this unfortunately fell at the exact wrong week in June for me, uh, so I, I can't make it. Yeah. But yes, we will endeavor, as we always do, to record an episode as soon as we possibly can. And if there's anything that prevents that, we'll make sure to put it on Mastodon and in the members' Discord and stuff. But sure. the, we will do everything as is human possible, humanly possible to record and right. get our episode out even, as close to WWC ending as well. Even if I am recording it standing outside of the store down at Apple Park in the press see, Now area. you see our draw the line on that one. I, I think I would wait. I, for me personally, I would wait till Tuesday if, if we're going to get that. Uh, no, no more, no more car cast. I don't know. Like, yeah, but, but with like a mic, with a microphone, if it was just background noise, I think we could probably do it, and it would suppress it mostly. Anyway, we. I hope it was, won't come to that. I hope it will be a little no, more controlled I, than I, that. Genuinely, that's we're having this conversation. If that was what it was, I would wait until Tuesday. Yeah, what like about I just, if it was I, in a secluded I, place outside the Steve Jobs Theater where there was nobody but me, but I was outside, and there might have been birds. I would prefer to wait. Okay. Well, we'll see. Well, we, we're going to make all efforts to record on Monday in a controlled environment. Yeah, we'll do everything Mike we hates can. Birds and, and sound of air. I just think an, an important episode deserves good sounding audio. Yeah, oh, I agree. Too audio. bad about this one. Oh, too bad anyway. about the roofers. Yep, too bad uh, about but it. I, I, w- I would say the post WWDC episode is more important than the draft. If such I, a thing I agree. I agree. It's true. 
If you would like to send us in your questions, your follow-up, your feedback for the show, you can always do so at UpgradeFeedback.com. You can check out Jason's work at SixColors.com and hear his podcast at TheIncomparable.com and here on Relay FM, where you can also hear me too, and you can check out my work at CortexBrand.com. You can find us on social media. Jason is at JSNL, J-S-N-E-L-L. I am at iMike, I-M-Y-K-E. You can watch video clips of the show on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, where we are at Upgrade Relay. You can also see uh, full video versions of the show on YouTube as well. And you will see I have a new uh, recording area that I have put together for video. So I hope people like that. You can go see that on our video channels this week. Thank you to our members who support us with Upgrade Plus. Thank you to our sponsors, which are ExpressVPN, Tailscale, and Squarespace of this week's episode. But most of all, thank you for listening. Until next time, say goodbye, Jason Snow. Goodbye, Mike Hurley. Goodbye, Mike Hurley.